Welcome to the Hidden Gems Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Jordan Richard. We got our co-host, Ray McCallum. A lot of things going on in the basketball world that needs to get talked about. A lot of players signing and a lot of players getting waived, a lot of Exhibit 10s. Why are we seeing that, Ray? Uh, I mean, it's that time of the year. Uh, what's crazy is I've been seeing online a lot of people are trying to clown guys uh, saying that they sign for four hours and then they get waived right after. But that's you know not the case. Um, a lot of these guys that you're seeing that are signing in these last couple of days to NBA teams and then getting waived a couple hours after. Uh, that's saying that those guys are committing to play for that team, that NBA team's a G League affiliate. Um, so what it basically does is you sign with the NBA team before training camp and the, uh, is over and the regular season starts. And then that player's rights, you know, are officially with that organization and they can allow them to play for their G League team without having to go through the G League draft. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of it on social media and then a lot of people are like confused as to what's going on. So I felt like it's, we both felt like it was the perfect time for us to come out with this episode, you know, and then just transition into the Exhibit 10. You know, can you just elaborate on what the Exhibit 10 is just for the viewers and stuff out there too that are listening? Yeah, so you'll see uh, also a lot of guys have been signing Exhibit 10s for training camp. Uh, what that does is it allows, every NBA team's allowed six Exhibit 10s. Um, so it's essentially, it's like a minimum contract. Um, it gives you an option where if you go to camp and you do make the team and you're on a minimum deal, you know, slotted by however many years you have in the league, that years of service. If you're a rookie, you're on a rookie minimum, you know, contract uh, with trigger dates where you can get, um, you know, waived at any time throughout the season. Uh, but what this also does is there's going to be some guys who don't uh, make the NBA roster. Um, but this gives them a chance to, you know, go play for the, that team's G League affiliate team. And they can get up to $50,000 um, if they spend 60 days with that G League team on top of the $35,000 uh, that they, they make from their G League salary. So essentially for a young kid coming out of college undrafted, this gives them an opportunity to be seen by an NBA team that has interest in them possibly, make $50,000, and then go down and play in the G League and, you know, make another 35000 35, So it's a total of 85000 for the season. So so what's the alternative if I don't? Like, say I'm a rookie and then I go on draft and I just try to make a team in training camp and I don't get an Exhibit 10. It's more of a risk that I'm not going to get paid. I'm going to get prorated or what's the situation with that? Uh, I mean, nowadays they kind of changed it, um, you know, about five, six years ago, guys, you would see veteran players that would be going to training camp and, you know, signing for, you know, 50000 100000 I mean, some guys even getting $500,000 and going to training camp and getting waived. Um, but that money is guaranteed for going to camp. Now the game's changed a little bit with the two ways. And then with the Exhibit 10, um, it's an opportunity you can bring up to like 20 guys, I want to say, to training camp. Right. So you normally have 15 on your active roster and then you might have two that are on two ways. So that's 17. And then you can bring, you know, six guys to uh, to camp on exhibit 10. So really, if you're going to go to camp, most likely you're going to most likely as a young player undrafted, you'll get an exhibit 10. And then you'd say you don't make the team. You'll most likely go play for their G League team. And, you know, you can get a little bit more money this, this going this route. Yeah, and, and just for the listeners out there, a lot of, you know, even with the research, you know, that Ray has done and, and has also kind of elaborated with me on, I know these rules always kind of change sporadically, yeah. you know, um, especially with COVID going on, some rules have changed, you know, so the amount of number of Exhibit 10s was, you know, at five, now it's at six. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, just going back to the Exhibit 10, for, you know, a veteran player, is it, right. is it, good because you have a little bit of stability especially for like an overseas guy right that you know they get that money guaranteed and then they can go they don't make the team possibly either go to the g league or overseas yeah definitely i mean and also you'll see too you know you'll have guys veteran players you know i'm um, more so in their third maybe fourth year maybe fifth year in the league uh years of service that they've had um that will still sign an exhibit 10 and they might not even go to training camp with the team right so they might sign the exhibit 10 you know, maybe the last week or, you know, week and a half, maybe two weeks before training camp's over. And then you don't even see the guy playing in any preseason games or anything. But, you know, that means him, the agent and the team, they agreed upon, okay, well, I'll sign the Exhibit 10. You know, I want to play for you. I'm committing to play for your G League team. And it's a way that, you know, he can get uh, a little bit more money and more than 
just thirty five thousand dollars by playing in G League and get a total of eighty five. If he's there, the the total of the sixty days, you have to be in the G League for sixty days, two months to get the the full fifty on top of your G League salary, and it and it also allows that veteran player to kind of put himself in a situation where like you know I like how this organization's G League team plays. You know they have some interest in me. I'd rather do this than going overseas. There's a little bit more incentive. I get a little bit more money. It makes a little bit more sense for me to stay home and, and do this route. You know, I'm going to go to a team that's going to allow me maybe to, you know, have a starting role or, you know, kind of ideal role what I'm walking into. So, so that's basically kind of controlling did. your own destiny is what you, what you say. Yeah, you know for sure. Because, go to. because if not, you know, then you have to go through the G league draft and when yeah. you're in there, any, I mean, any, any G league team can draft can, you. Can draft you. And that, yeah. and that might not play out the way you want. They might have young guys on the NBA roster that they're sending down or, you know, their two-way might play your position. So it, it, it can go a, a lot of different ways. Yep. And then just for the G League draft, for for those that don't know, you know, I got drafted in G League draft. The, the, the draft doesn't mean that you've made the team. A lot of people think, oh, you got drafted G League and you make the team. Like, right. nah, that doesn't mean that. It means you're still fighting for that spot. Uh, it doesn't exactly. mean that at all. So just a little, you know, asterisk by that too. Um, you know, just transitioning, you know, going into now we, we talk about the two ways. Um, when I first started Swish, you know, three years ago, I saw a lot of players, you know, start to, that's when the two way just kind of started fairly being new. And um, I started to see players right when the draft ended, they would get signed to two ways. And to me, it was just kind of weird because I'm like, why why not wait until like after summer league, see how a player does? You know, why are teams running out of their two ways so quickly? So, Ray, so what do you what do you feel like with the two ways? Like, why do we start to see so many two ways go so quick, you know, right after the draft ends? Yeah, so now with the two way, uh, I mean, it's it's almost like, you know, a, a full contract, basically. So now if if you're on a two way contract, basically, um, and you're there for, you have to be active on the roster for, I want to say 50 games, you have to be active. Um, you will receive a, a contract of 462,000, which is uh, essentially like half of a, a minimum rookie contract, which is like 925,000. So basically you'll have a kid who, you know, is undrafted and, you know, the, the agent gets the job done and he gets the kid on a two-way that night. But the tricky part is, you know, you can be cut at any time on a two-way. It's not like it's guaranteed money. So some of these guys you see, they don't get drafted, but then they, they're posting and everything is so-and-so signs a two-way with him. They sign a two-way with this team. It's, you know, he's got to go to summer league. He's got to do his thing. And a lot of those guys go to summer league and then they ended up waving them off the two-way from there and they sign somebody else. Um, but for the kids who, you know, a lot of the guys are drafted later in the second round. Um, they automatically get two weight and they're normally on the team for the whole year and they'll get that contract of 462,000. They can learn to develop and, and, uh, and, and, and it, it really is a benefit for the young players, but it, it kind of hurts the vets to be honest with you. Yeah. So, you know, just talking about the two way and, you know, we'll, we'll go back to it. Um, you know, going back to the draft, so when you see those players, you know, that don't make the first round and they're like kind of in the beginning par portion of the second round, you know, that 30 to like 39 range, you know, is there any kind of difference, you know, between those those numbers compared to like the higher numbers in the second round? Because I see a lot more guys stick, you know, just recently there was a player that actually ended up getting waived, you know, that was at the end of that second, I mean, in the beginning of that second round, you know, margin, but how is it normally for, you know, a guy, you know, like yourself that was in that second round, you know, like 36th pick, you know, how is it? Yeah. I mean, it's tough. Um, like, thank God. I, luckily I was a 36th pick. So I was, you know, high enough in the thirties where um, I had a three year deal. My first two years were guaranteed. My last year uh, was a non guaranteed. So I had to play well in order to get that, uh, uh, that option on that third year picked up. Uh, but what you're seeing a lot is a lot of these guys who are drafted towards the end of the uh, second round, you know, they're essentially already getting slotted as a, a two way. Um, because what it does for a team is if, if you're on a three year, let's say three year uh, minimum rookie salary, rookie deal, you know, it's for three years, you're, you're, you're 920, 
five, 925,000 first year. It's like 1.5 something a second, 1.6 the third. And over the course of three years, you're getting like 4.1 million. Where if a team two weighs you, you know, you're looking at like 1.3 million over the course of three years. Um, so it, it's tricky, but I look at a guy like Jordan Clarkson, who was a late second round pick, and he, you know, he does well his, his rookie year. He does really well. He hoops his second year. And then, you know, now his, his, his first year contract is over. Now he signs, you know, a new $50 million contract. Same with Taylor. I mean, should we talk about a lot of Laker players that we see happen that that happens to, you know, so exactly. Taylor just signed a big time deal. It ended up working in his favor. Yeah. But see, then, then, then there's also like, you know, there's a guy who doesn't get that opportunity like a Jordan or a Taylor. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're on the two year, but then that first two years, they just don't get to play. So they would have been beneficial if they had that third year, you know, of like that non guarantee where the team would guarantee it over the summer where they get that op extra opportunity. So it's just, you know, it's just a, a little bit of luck, in, you know, being in the right situation. Um, but, you know, that it, it's really changed now with the two way, um, you know, and, and with that two way, it gives, you know, teams two extra roster spots to give it to, you know, two younger players. All right. So, you know, all right, back to the two way. Um... Just talking about guys, you know, that ball out. Say I ball out during summer league, you know, team starts really liking me. You know, Austin from the Lakers. We had uh, Luca Garza who just got his two-way converted. How does that typically work, you know, with the two-way conversions? Yeah, so normally you see uh, guys two-ways getting converted uh, during the regular season. Um, I would say the first one who kind of started that that I can remember was Alonzo Trier, right? So. If I'm not mistaken, I think he was undrafted coming out of Arizona, right? He goes to the Knicks, uh, organization who liked him. He gave him a two-way contract, starts the season off. He's killing. He's out there hooping. So it's like, hey, we, you know, agents like that, let's, let's get this done. So he signs a, I'm pretty sure it was a two-year, $6 million deal, right? So that year he's making more than some guys that were, you know, even in the first round, actually. Hmm. So for for that, like, he was probably the first one that, that happened. Um uh, now you're starting to see, like you said, uh, the Lakers did it. The Pistons did it this year uh, with those two guys, um, converted them, you know, before the season started this year. Uh, and then that kind of falls into, I think, like you go into free agency. You don't know, you know, who you're going to get in free agency. You don't might not know what your roster is looking like. So you draft these guys, you already two-way them. And then, you know, then you realize that you have some flexibility, maybe to switch out the two-way and, and convert that guy to a, to a roster spot. Yeah. Um, so that's what you're kind of starting to see. Yep. And then, you know, just because we always talk about this, you know, Alex Caruso, also, you know, Quinn Cook, you know, what was the situation with them? And, you know, how did that end up working out for them? Definitely. I mean, first off, like you said, Alex Caruso, you know, this is a guy also who's undrafted, right? Um, at the time, it was the D League. Um, and then, you know, he's grinding in the D League. Then he gets an opportunity uh, with the South Bay Lakers. Uh, which he gets a two-way. Uh, and back then, the two-way was different when he had to do it. It was like, I think you had to be with the team for like 45 days, practice, all type of stuff. It wasn't as smooth as it is now. It wasn't 462,000. It might have been half that, like 200,000, maybe 250. Um, so anyways, he's with the South Bay Lakers, uh, which is with, the, obviously, the Los Angeles Lakers organization. So the Lakers are struggling that year. Uh, Caruso got an opportunity at the end of the season play really well and you see what that happened and turn into a, a standard contract and then now now look at him today and then if I'm not mistaken I think Quinn Cook was one of the first guys to sign the two-way contract when it when it became eligible a couple of years ago um, he did it with Golden State uh, Steph Curry ends up getting hurt for a couple games uh, Quinn's ready he steps right in and took advantage of his opportunity and, uh, and I mean, it, it worked out really well for them. I mean, there's a lot of guys that the two ways have been converted and turned out to great success stories. And, you know, that's kind of how the game's going now. Yeah, and just, you know, just a little bit, we, we always bring this up with the D League and the G League, man. The D League was a lot different. The G League is a lot is a lot better than, it, than, it, than the D League was. You know, there's a lot more money, more opportunity for guys to, you know, make a roster. You know, how was it for the D League? in terms of not having a two way, like what's the difference? Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, back with the D league, you know, a two way was not even 
heard, thought about anything. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> yeah. So your thing there is you're trying to grind it out just to get that 10 day. And, you know, back then the 10 day, you know, now for a rookie, uh, the, the 10 day is like 61,000. So back then it might've been 50. It might've been 50. And to be honest with you, I think it might've been a little less than 50. I think 50 was like for the second year guy or a guy with a one year experience. So now you have zero years experience. You walk in there you get two 10 days, you know, now you're looking at $120,000 in, in 20 days. So, um, but yeah, I mean, guys are playing for that 10 day and they still are. The 10 days still is uh, yeah, a thing for say. sure. Um, they definitely still give out 10 days. I, I technically have kind of seen more so they give it to more of the veteran guys and it's all prorated on how many years you've been in the league, whatever. But, um, and for the, some of the younger guys, a lot of times they'll, they'll, they'll cut a kid on a two-way and sign somebody else to a two-way. Um, but, you know, getting uh, for a rookie, getting two 10 days and you can sign a limited amount of 10 days too. But it's, it's, it's way more uh, luxurious now than it was, you know, five, 10 years ago. Yeah. And, you know, just talking about this transition now, because I don't think a lot of people are realizing what a lot of the movement that you see that is going on is low, is kind of setting up the G league situation. Right. So how is that transition during your first couple, um, you know, weeks into training camp for G league? Cause that's starting to starting to happen too, as well. How does that usually yeah. go? So right now you have training camp, which basically preseason and NBA just kind of finished over this past weekend, last couple of days. Right. Yeah. So, you know, these guys who are on exhibit 10s and are committing to play for their G League team, you know, they've been there with the team. Most of the guys have been there throughout the whole training camp process, probably have been there for a month or so working out with the team. And then um, NBA season starts, you know, um, coming up this week. And then I want to say the G League training camp starts like on October 23rd, 24th. Yeah, yeah. Right. So those guys get a couple of days break. So they go through the whole NBA training camp you know, and then they get maybe a week off and then they got to do a whole nother training camp with the G League. Um, but, you know, the guys who are in training camp with the NBA team, you know, they're coming in shape, you know, probably have a, a pretty good understanding of the of the way the team plays. A lot of the G League affiliate teams try to, you know, model the same uh, style play that the NBA team runs. So they kind of have an upper hand going in and, and doing that. But yeah, you transition right away. It's quick. I'm not too sure what the G league structure is this year, the games and everything due to COVID, but in a traditional year, you know, you could, you could, you can get waived. And then, you know, four or five days later, you got to go down to the G league and, you know, have that whole training camp and then be ready to play games in November. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a quick transition for sure. All right. So last question. My last question is, it's kind of funny because I've, I've noticed this even since the D League was around, you know, when you when you when you are that guy that goes from the G League or the D League down to play with, you know, th that uh, affiliate team. Right. Yeah. How is it for you? Are you like, bro, I'm about to kill these dudes. I've been seeing everything possible in the league because you see players usually that come down that first or two go game. They go crazy. Oh, for sure. Like OD. So like, yeah, how is it usually because, like when you come into camp, you taking every shot, everything? Or like, how is that situation? Uh, I mean, it just depends. Like, it just kind of depends on the player. But everybody's going to have that edge, right? Everybody's going to have that chip I'm, on the Hey, hold on. I remember you with the Grand Rapids, bro. Exactly. You know, <laughs> so, you know, it's, yeah, it's one bro. of those things where it's like, you're so close to making the NBA roster, right? Um, you know, just... And you feel like you should have made the team, whatever. And, you know, you want to go down to the G League and prove, like, I'm, I'm an NBA player. Like, I deserve to, to be here. And, you know, that's your only option, your only chance of getting back into the NBA that season by playing in the G League. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're definitely going to go down and, you know, you know, try to prove to the whole league that, you know, I don't belong here and, you know, I should be up there, you know, in, in the league. Um, but it's a grind, man. I mean – there's nothing easy about the G League. Every night you're going to be playing against somebody who can hoop. You know what I mean? You're going to have some of the top players that you've probably been playing against your whole life in college. And for the young guys, they think it's going to be sweet. And they're going to walk in there. And you got veterans. you got vets. you got guys who have played over 150 NBA games. And you got guys who have, who have been battle-tested for years, you know. And, and they're looking at you like you're the rook. So everybody's got something to prove. Everybody's got, you know, to hold their own. And, 
I mean, it's fun, it's competitive, um, but it's definitely a grind for sure. Yeah. What is the, okay, because we always talk about overseas. We, I don't think we ever have even mentioned this before, so I, we might as well mention this now. We're probably going to mention it again. What is the benefit of playing in the G League? You know, what What did it teach you, you know, with you playing for a few times in there? You know, how, how, did, how did it help your game, like, mold your game? I mean, for me, um, being a second-round pick, I was in sack, right? Uh, I wasn't playing. Uh, they had a lot of guards ahead of me. Um, so they sent me down to the to Reno. They sent me down to the – it was a D-League at the time. And I was hot, man. I was hot, man. I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, we were supposed to play the Lakers and the Clippers. Everybody looks forward for the L.A. trip, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they sent me down to play in, um, like, Sioux Falls. Like, uh, uh, you know where, what I mean? Wait, you got to say where Sioux Falls is, bro. I mean, they sent me down. Uh, it's uh, South Dakota. Yep. I knew exactly and, uh, where it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was in Reno. Then I was in Sioux Falls with South Dakota. It's cold. It's dark. I'm looking around like, where am I at? I think we had, we were staying at like a Motel 8. You know what I'm saying? My best friend Ben McLemore is FaceTiming me. They're, they're, they're at the JW Marriott down there in uh, LA Live. Like, he's living. <laughs> you already right? know that's the spot. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, um, but, you know, I, I definitely uh, took advantage of the opportunity because I have been playing it forever. So, you know, I, I went down there and, and, and you want, I wanted to prove to them that, you know, look, man, I should be, you know, playing in these NBA games. That's what I was thinking at the time. And I went down there, I played really well. Yep. And I think I, I played six games that first time. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful for that opportunity to get to go down there and play. And it carried over because I got an opportunity a couple weeks, maybe a month after that, and, and I was ready to go. Yep. I always keep saying last thing. I feel like I'm a coach. Like, you know, when you run into suicides and stuff and they're like, yo, this is the last one and you got to run one more, but you just always give me like something where I, I think about something else. Um, I just, I just recorded this with Swiss too, just so people can see, but a lot of times, you know, even in the preseason, you see before like all the main guys start warming up and working out, you see a lot of the guys that are kind of like on the borderline of exhibit tens, you know, trying to make the roster they're playing in a full game, you know, like before their games is going. They'll play three on three ones, you know, different things like that. So a lot of times people don't realize that you guys are still putting in that grind work even before, you know, and it's an opportunity for you to be seen because there's coaches there that are putting you guys through those different workouts and stuff. You're going, you're doing your game before the game, to be honest with you too, sometimes, because you might have that game later on, get caught in a play, but before that you still playing and, doing scrimmages and stuff like that. How was that? Were you ever involved with those things? And how was that for you? All the time. Um, definitely. You know, you had to get to the arena sometimes like four hours before. And, you know, you're out there playing three on three, one on one. But, you know, what's tricky and what's crazy about the league is you never know who's watching, right? Oh. You know, you have a lot of scouts from other teams, you know, that you don't even know that they're scouts, you know? You're, mm -hmm. thinking, they scout, you're thinking they just, you know, work in the Staples Center or whatever, right? They're just sitting out there watching you, you know, and they're, you know, they're taking notes or saying, hey, okay, this kid isn't playing, but let me see how he, how he is pregame. Does he take it serious, whatever? And uh, I mean, it's very important to come in there and, 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 and get your work in because that's another thing. You never know when your number might get called. Like I'll never forget. There was times where, uh, you know, my rookie year um, and even my second year, like I wasn't in the rotation. I'm not playing, but you know, I had to be on that early, early bus, right? Sometimes it's a, just, you got to take a taxi, you know, you got to get the taxi, get there early and you're out there playing threes and you're going game speed, you're getting it in. Like you really putting in your work. You might be doing some full court transition stuff. And then the coach threw me in the game. And you know what I'm saying? Like you get there four hours before. You Yo, get, hey, hold you on. Get... When coach calls your name, right? Bro, do you kind of like, you kind of glance over, kind of like shocked and then like hurry up and run over there. Like try to take your warm up oh, off. You know, like, you know, even when I'm in the bench kind of guy, sometimes, you know, you got everything on, right? Last time you really got loose was, you know, 45 minutes ago on the layup lines, right? And then coach say your name in the heat of the moment. You, I mean, I'm always ready, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, the first time I was probably like, well, he called me, you know, like, all right, you got to, you know, in the league, you know, you got the breakaways, you got the breakaway <laughs> jacket, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
So, so I mean, you got to be ready. It's crazy. And I'll never forget. I mean, that definitely happened to me uh, uh, a good number of times. And, uh, and uh, you know, I was always ready and, you know, make the most of it. Uh, but, yeah, it's crazy how that, you know, that pregame, is, is very important. I've, I've seen guys get jobs, no lie, like off the pregame, like literally scouts come and they just, I remember when you were, you know, in sack and you weren't playing and, but you always went hard and it, 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 that stuff carries over for sure. Man, you know, I'm glad you said that in closing, you know, um, it's crazy how God works. Cause just recently, you know, I was at the Clippers versus sack, which is kind of crazy that you, you know, you're talking about your sack experience, same deal. You know, uh, I, I went there early, got it, got there like 430 game didn't start to 730. And um, they were running, they were running three on three on the opposite end. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of guys from the Clippers, you know, there was there was guys with some importance that were watching them uh, scrimmage. So it's not like you gas in the situation It's actually you're telling a fact. And, um, you know, I just wanted people to hear that. So, you know, just in closing, you know, thank you guys for, you know, listening to this episode of the Hidden Gems Basketball Podcast. We're going to bring you more, you know, things that are happening in NBA. Start talking more about NBA stuff too as well. I know we've been giving you a lot of overseas stuff, but, you know, thanks for taking the time. Make sure you subscribe, you know, and uh, look out for some more episodes. We're going to bring you some more heat.